Hello. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me now? I'm audible. Okay. Let's start the session. Last topic, we discussed the OSI model. In OSI model, we discussed the layer information. How many layers we discussed? How many layers we discuss? We done the application layer, presentation layer. Clear. Now today we need to start the next layer part. If you are getting any confusion about the session, so you can receive the session on Google Drive or YouTube also. Clear. How to verify? You just need to go to channel first. This channel, G2 JS1. Okay. And how to verify the videos? Go to live session. And your D1 is this one, D2. D1 and D2 we already done. In D2, we discuss application layer services. We discuss presentation layer. We discuss data types, compression, decompression mechanism. Clear? Okay. Now, today we need to discuss the part of OSI model again. But today we start the session from the session layer. So, seven number layer is done. Six layer is done. Now, Fifth layer. Fifth layer name is a session layer. If someone asking why we use session layer and which which scenario session layer work in a network, so it will be responsible to create session create session means you can say not create you can say it will be responsible to initiate delete maintain session this session will do with the help of a port number table. Which one table, dear? Port number table. If someone asking, sir, why we use port number table? So before doing the session layer theoretical part, first we need to clear the session layer port number table concept. Okay. Last time we discussed some port numbers. So today we also discuss the port number scenario. Port number means it's a unique identity to identify protocols and services. Okay, one more thing. It's available in numerical. Now one more thing, port number size, a total port number size. It's a 16 bit. And if you are convert into bytes, so two bytes. If we are putting a formula, so two power 16. So we are getting the valid port numbers. How many valid port numbers we are getting? So we are getting six total, six, five, five, three, six. It's my total port number, but the port number range we are getting a start from one till go to six, five, five, three, five. Now one more thing. Port number types available. So we are getting some types of port number. We are getting a two types. One is my uh, reserve port number. And another is my unreserved port number. So what is the difference in between a reserved or unreserved? We need to discuss first. Now, one by one we discuss. First, 
reserve port number. Okay, reserve port number means this port number already defined with protocols and services. Now one more thing. This port number also known as a well-known port number. We can say well-known port. Okay. Now one more thing. This port number range 1 to 1024. For example, if you are using HTTP, HTTPS, if you are using FTP, if you are using DNS. So last time, whenever we are using HTTP, so port number is 80, HTTP is 443, FTP 2021, and DNS 53. So every service has a specific port number, it's identical, but you can verify this port number available in my range, in reserve range. Now one more thing. We are getting a second port number is unreserved port number. Why we use unreserved port number? First thing, this port number client or you can say users will use whenever having multiple multiple applications to access services okay one more thing this port number called a random port number which one a random port number one more thing this port number reach for client purpose for user 1025265535 why we are calling user side only because if user want to access the google.com so we are getting multiple application, multiple browser. So that is the reason user always use unreserved port numbers to access a specific service. So how session layer work in a network? So we need to create the design. So we are getting this side user and user connected with my modem and modem connected with ISP sign. Now, internet service provider. Now, this user say I want to access some services. This user will maintain which one table now? Port number table. Okay, inside port number table, we are getting multiple things. For example, example purpose only. We are getting first example tab number. Then we are getting source port number then we are getting the destination port number then we are getting which type of service we are accessing then services information now so this user say brother i want to access google.com i want to access multiple web websites so this user access the first a google chrome and google chrome this user access the tab number is which one one on tab number one, this user say, I want to access ccna.com website and then enter. So this user say, I'm generating some data. This user say, I'm generating some data. In this data, this user say, I'm initiating the session. Clear? For which one website? For CCNA. In initiate process, this user will add inside the data, source port and destination port. So this user say, I'm having multiple application to access. So source port is random series. Random series port number is start from 1025. But destination is CCNA. So it's a well-known service. We are accessing HTTP. That means 80. And this data will be forward from user to modem. 
whenever modem receive modem verify the destination port number services 80 that means http so this data traffic modem will forward a isp whenever isp receive your data isp check okay this user want to access the http website isp say i am sending the reply so isp will provide the service so isp say i am sending the data reply time and inside data isp say i am sending the source port and destination port right now isp providing the service so that is the reason source port is reverse now source port is 80 and destination port which tab requesting so how to identify the tab so port number we already defined 1025 whenever this data modem receive modem forward on user and user forward on application so this user say after getting the reply this session will be maintain because we are getting the same tab this reply yes or no with the help of port number of source so this session will be maintained tab number is one source port is 1025 destination is 80 and which one service HTTP. okay no one now this user say brother i want to access one more website so this user again open google chrome and tab number is now two and this user say i want to access the ccnp website and then user again generate the data inside data this user will add again source port destination port now this user say i am initiating the session but right now source port is again we need to put the random because 1025 any use for tab one so now for tab two this user will access the next port number available is 1026 and destination is which one four four because CCNP will access HTTPS service and this data will be travel on user to modem. Modem verify the destination is 443. Okay, modem will accept and forward on ISP. ISP verify the destination is HTTPS website service request. Okay, no worry. ISP say I am sending the reply message. Why? Why ISP send the reply message? Because ISP verify the user want to access the 443. Okay, now ISP say I am sending the reply. In reply time, ISP create the data. Inside data, ISP forward the source port and destination port. Now ISP say I am sending the service. Which one service providing? 443 and destination is 1026. So this modem again receive modem forward user. User forward on tab number two. And this user will say, okay, tab number two. Source port we are using 1026, 443 and which one service? HTTPS. Now, next thing, next thing we need to check. This session will be again maintained. But after some time, after some time, if someone go to tab one and close this tab, then automatically this session will be deleted from my port number T1. Okay, now. This user say, brother, I want to access again one more time the tab, Google Chrome and tab number is, see, this user say, I want to access, for example, Gentech Networks website, clear, and then enter. So this user will again generate data, then source port, destination port, because this user say, I am initiating the session. But now, that source port number is which one we are accessing now? Because 1025 and 1026 already in use. Because 1025 we are using last time and this source port session is deleted. But right now, if you are again creating new session, so we are getting same port number 1025. No, we are getting a next available port number 1027. And which time we are getting this port number after recycle my complete range. And then destination port is, for example, 443. This data will be initiated, forward on modem, modem to ISP side, ISP will send back again, reply. So reply time ISP say I'm generating the data for reply, source port, destination port. And now ISP say I'm providing the service of 443 and which, which tab? So last port number is 1027 because we are getting the same port number request now. And this user again maintain the session 1027. 443 HTTPS. Now, how to verify this thing is true or false? So, access the CMD and write down the command is net stat. 
enter. So right now we are getting a multiple session is established. Clear multiple because we are accessing Zoom application also. So Zoom also secure channel. Yes or no? Now we are accessing the new website. For example, if I am saying I just want to access the google.com. Which one? Google. Some session is established. Some session is closed. Again established. Clear. Now we are accessing the new tab. And new tab, I am just put down the, uh, write down this one website. GentechNetworks.com. So now verify in backend. We are getting some established session with HTTPS. Yes or no? Some established session. So this session, if I am close this tab, then this session automatically close after some seconds. It will take us some seconds to verify. Clear? So we are getting session close. If you again access, again access, then again session will be established. And if you close this website, if you close this website, then the session will be end. Now, some session will be closed. Now, so this one is my session layer in backend we are getting. How to verify a net state command. But this session only for local user, for your, for your laptop session will be shown. Now, the next layer is after session layer. We need to jump to next layer. Next layer name is the transport layer. Why we use the transport layer? Transport layer is very important layer. It will be responsible to transfer data from source to destination. This data transmission process done by a two protocols. How many protocols do you have? Two protocols. One more thing. In this layer, data slicing also perform. Okay. So we need to discuss each point. Right now, first question, two protocol, which one? So we are getting the first protocol name is reliable. Second is unreliable. Okay, mostly students getting, sir, what is the meaning of protocol? Reliable protocol. What is the meaning of protocol? Protocol means it's a set of rules. It's some some uh, rules we are following in protocols. If you are sending the data, must we get the reply message, must we get the acknowledge message. That means we can get the data delivery guaranteed. Some protocols send the data, but never get the reply, never get the acknowledge. That means data delivery is not guaranteed. So what is the meaning of actual this protocols? So we discuss one by one each protocol. First, we start from the reliable protocol. We discuss first. A reliable protocol. Now, some short theory you need to remember. Whenever a user or if you're having a device, a send data with the help of reliable protocol for destination and destination if you're having user if you're having device receive data then must be sent back a reply or Acknowledge these two messages must be sent back. Okay, now reliable means mostly reliable means reliable means it's a TCP protocol. TCP protocol means TCP means it's a transmission 
control protocol this protocol used by services and routing protocols also okay now one more thing this protocol will do data transmission this protocol data delivery guarantee okay one more thing this protocol add tcp header which one header dear tcp header with your data whenever we are shopping online so we need to put the some information a name mobile number contact email id addresses so same information tcp also add. so in tcp header same kind of information we are add so right now one more thing always remember for tcp if you are using the tcp for data transmission so tcp header size how many size of header we are using for tcp tcp header size by default 20 bytes in a one byte we are getting eight bits but in 20 bytes we are getting how many bits 160 bits if you are sending multiple data so each data add 20 bytes but 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 this header can be go to 20 to uh, you can say 40 byte it's a large amount size 60 also possible but 40 is a uh, maximum you can say now in tcp header we are using some flags this flag inform which process right now are running so multiple types of flags we are using mostly i think multiple but i will discuss some important flag so first flag name is synchronization acknowledge fin push reset and one more available it's called urgent point urgent if you want to send your data urgently so you use this one but how to use this flags if someone asks flags is also getting some condition which condition if you want to use so one means enable so that means we are using the flag zero means disable that means we are not accessing the flag okay so flags available in my header this flag will inform the running process information in tcp now one more thing tcp protocol feature so some feature we are using and this feature we need to discuss now first feature name is it's a connection oriented second feature name is sequencing third feature name is uh, you can say the flow control flow control feature available Fourth feature name is we are getting always reply. Fifth feature name is acknowledge. So we already clear na? whenever destination user or device receive data, then must be sent back reply and acknowledge. Okay, reply or acknowledge is two different things we discussed. Now, one more thing, one more protocol we are using, which one after reliable protocol information. We are using one more protocol, its name, unreliable protocol. Reliable means data delivery is guaranteed. So you can say whenever we are using uh, reliable, so every data reply message we are giving. But if you are using unreliable, so what will be happen now? Whenever user or if you are having device, send data with the help of
unreliable protocol and destination user or device receive data then never send back reply or acknowledge so never send back reply and acknowledge this thing is clear so that is the reason we are calling unreliable unreliable means data delivery is not guaranteed but in unreliable protocol we are using actual protocol name is udp udp protocol we are using udp means udp means it's a user datagram protocol now one more thing udp protocol used by services or some routing protocol and multiple things also using now one more thing udp udp protocol data delivery not guaranteed one more thing udp protocol use udp header with your data will always add which one header a udp header now one more thing udp header by default size of udp header it's a 8 byte so in tcp we are getting 20 byte 8 bit 8 byte means we are using only 64 bit so which one which one protocol header is a lower size a higher size so tcp is higher a udp is a lower now one more thing in udp protocol we are getting some feature as well udp features first feature it's a connection less second uh, no sequencing process no reply no acknowledge fourth data fast delivery fifth small header clear so this one is some features available in udp some feature available in tcp so we start tcp and udp is comparison clear now we need to start so we discuss tcp only now tcp use first feature its name connection oriented feature what will be happen in connection oriented in this feature whenever device trying to do communication data forward or receive then tcp will follow first three way handshake process which one process here three way handshake process first we do so we discuss very small method if you're having two users first we discuss non-technical so you can get some idea and this side we are getting a sim both are connected with wired connection so physically connected both devices if you're having wireless so no worry now so bob say i want to send some data but with my data some services also we are using so that is the reason i am add tcp header so whenever we add tcp header with my data so bob will say brother first task we need to perform which one connection oriented before sending before communication before receiving so bob say okay brother i will do no worry i will do now bob say my first task 
Bob said, first message, same side. Which one? Bob say, I want to set up a communication with you. Which one? I want to set up a communication with you. Before communication, we cannot do any task. So Bob say, I want to set up a communication with you. Sam will receive this message. No worry. Sam say, okay. Okay, brother. So Sam send first reply. That means okay message. I am receive your this message. Okay. Now Sam say, in this message, one more message add and say, start your communication. So how many message delivers from Sam side? We deliver one message, but inside the message, we are sending two information. Okay means I'm receiving your data. If you are sending any message, no worry. And I'm also start my communication. Now, Bob verify. Okay, last time I'm sending, I want to set up a communication. That means okay message for my last message. And Sam also initiate the session. Sam also say, start your communication task. Okay, no worry. Bob say, okay message. So how many steps we clear this process? One, two, and three. Now, this one is non-technical. Okay. Now in technical, how to, how to form the three-way handshake process. Now, again, we connect two users, Bob, and this side, we are getting the same. Both are connected physically with the help of wire. Okay. Now, Bob say, I want to set up a communication message. Nah? So Bob use TCP protocol. In TCP, we are using some flags. This flag is very important. Okay. So whenever we are using sync flag, so that means for a start communication, which one start your communication. And whenever we are using acknowledge, that means accepted. Now, so Bob say, I want to set up a communication with you. So Bob saying, which one message? Sync message. Now, whenever Sam received this message, so Sam say, okay, someone is starting the communication. So send, send by acknowledge. That means accepted your message. And also sending one more message. Start your communication. Sam also want na? Now, whenever Bob received this message, so Bob verify, okay, I'm getting acknowledged. That means my message successfully delivered, accepted for communication, and also is initiate the session from Sam side. Now, Bob send back acknowledge message. So how many steps we cover again? Verify. One, two, and this one is three. So it's called a three-way handshake process. So we done three-way handshake process. So if you are using TCP, so each device always do three-way handshake process. If you're watching the YouTube live streaming and we, uh, thousands user connected with your live, so each and every user will do the, which one task? Three-way handshake process task. So in this case, your server getting uh, CPU utilization high. Sometimes you can get stuck. Yes or no? Internet speed also we are getting chalked down. The network congestions. So that is the reason. The streaming concept, broadcast concept, we are not using TCP protocol. It will take a slow process. Now, after connection oriented, we are getting the next feature name is Sequencing. Sequencing feature is very important. In a production network, sometimes we are getting packet drop issues. Clear? So sequencing is very important. Whenever device want to, or you can say trying to send, receive data. Then must be checked, must be checked, M2 size, clear? 
what is the meaning of m2 size so be before discuss m2 if you are having pc if you are having a laptop so we are getting network interface card nic card clear this nic card we are getting in rj45 if you are having in your laptop pc server rj45 connector sometimes nic card also available for wi-fi clear in your laptop so nic card nic card this interface having the size so m2 means it's a maximum transfer unit m2 this feature define how many size data forward receive m2 by default size is 1500 byte by default but 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 from 1500 byte 20 byte how many 20 byte are reserved always for ip information so how many data you can say via this interface one four how many eight zero byte data okay no worry we can start the next part of sequencing now for example if you're having two brother bob and this side connected with a sim bob and sam connected with wi-fi or any physical connectivity no worry now bob say my this interface m2 size is 1500 byte sam say okay brother i am also getting this nic card m2 size is 1500 byte but now bob say brother i want to transmit some data and this data size is how many bytes this data size is how many bytes 2000 bytes so within a single box in a single box bob possible to forward data on same side no if your data is higher than your m2 size so this data will be dropped so in this case in this case if your data will be dropped so by default if you are using with your data which one protocol TCP protocol. So TCP will perform one task sequencing. Sequencing means with this data, with this data, we perform the slicing task. In a slicing device, Bob device will verify this interface capable to send actual data is 1480 byte. And front of your neighbor, Sam also capable to receive 1480 byte data. So in a slicing in 2000 byte, first data we create. First data, how much data possible? 1480 because 2000. So 1480 byte data. And then we create one more box. A rest of the data inside this box. How many? 520. So we create two box, but we are having only single box in a data. So how to, how to clarify this? Both data belong from single. So we put ID number, identification number is one, identification number is two. Why we put uh, one, why we put two? Because first box we create 1480 byte. So that is the number identification one. And then we create 520. So identification number is two. But both data belong from single. So we put the sequence number of data is both data one. So whenever someone receives the both data, verify the sequence number is one. That means both the data belong from a single box now now bob say brother i want to send this data same side and sam say okay i'm accepted your data but sam say brother i'm receiving the first data is 520 id number is two and sequence number is one and after after some second milliseconds we are receiving one more data 1480 and id number is one and sequence number is one now Bob say, brother, please send me the acknowledge message and acknowledge for how much data? 
you are receiving the 2000 byte actually. But, but verify on SEM side. SEM will get confusion. SEM say, brother, I'm receiving the last time 520 byte data and I'm receiving the 1480 byte data. How it possible to send back the acknowledge message on Bob's side? I'm received the 2000 byte. So SEM will verify both the data. Sequence number is 1, 1. So SEM device. SEM device will perform with this data reassembly. In reassembling time, in reassembling time, same device verify the first number packet, a first number data is 1480, then plus second is this one, 520. And put the sequence number as one. So actual data both. Same say, okay, I'm now sending 2000 byte data. I'm actually received, acknowledge. So now this process will be confirmed. In this process, in this process, we divide the data in two boxes. But first verify in a network, in a network, we are getting multiple devices, lots of devices available. So in network, how to identify and this process can be performed continuously each data? No, only one time. And in a network, in a network, we are getting the protocol name is PMTUD. I think this one is name. Path M2 Discovery Protocol, PMTU. So this protocol in running in backend and this protocol by default is enable each devices, PC, laptop, routers, access points, load balancers, IP phones, each device is automatically available. And this PMTUD protocol verify a lowest M2. If find out the lowest M2, so divide uh, data slicing performed via a lowest M2. So you can verify P, M, T, U, T. I think someone's short theory available. It's called verify. Its name is path M2 discovery is a standardized technique in computer networking for determining the maximum transmission unit size on the network path between two internet protocol or host, host main devices. Usually with the goal of the avoiding IP fragmentation. So this task we are calling sequencing. Actually name is fragmentation. Now this one performed by the TCP protocol only. Now the next feature name. Okay. I think slide is full. We need to create one more slide. Hold up. Increase the slide size. Okay. After done the sequencing task, we reach on third feature. Third feature name is a flow control. Flow control is very best feature in TCP. It's the best feature. Now, why we use the flow control feature? Whenever device trying to send, receive data, then check a buffer memory. Sometimes in a network, we are getting packet loss issue. So buffer memory always verify. So whenever device trying to send, receive data, then check buffer memory. This memory help to process data. Clear? So if you are using the Cisco vendor devices, so I think Cisco vendor devices, some fixed memory, okay, in a MB. So you can increase, you can decrease your uh, buffer memory in a router, in a switch, in a firewall, in an access point, in a load balancer. Okay. Now one more thing. So we create two person. For example, this one is Bob. And this side, the same. Both are connected with wired connection or wireless, no issue. Now. Bob say, brother, my this interface M2 size is actual 200 byte. If someone said manually, this interface 200 and this interface size is actually how many byte? 200 byte. Now, after removing the 20 byte header, okay? No need to add 20 byte also. So now, Bob say, brother, I want to transmit the data. I want to transmit the data and data size is 2000 byte again, but I am using the TCP protocol. So can you please verify in this scenario, 
Bob possible to process? No. So Bob will create the fragmentation task and Bob will say, brother, I'm creating how much, how much data with single data? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So this 2000 byte single box data will be divided into 10 boxes because not possible to pass from the single, single link. Now, Bob say any possibility available so I can get idea how much boxes SEM possible to receive, how many packet SEM possible to receive. So SEM say, brother, I'm having the buffer memory. This one is buffer memory, for example. This buffer memory can process only an, in a single time. How many boxes? Three boxes. But in a first time, Bob, Bob, know the buffer memory size of SEM? No. So Bob say, okay, if I if I'm not uh, getting any buffer memory information from the same side, so I will perform the task. This task name is windowing. Which one task? Windowing task. So in windowing task, Bob will say, okay, I'm not getting any idea about the same buffer memory. So Bob say in a first time, I am sending the single box. This single box travel from Bob to Sam side. Whenever Sam receives the single box, Sam will put into buffer memory and say, brother, I'm having lots of the memory to process your boxes. And after process, within a second, Sam will forward the which one message? Acknowledge. I'm successfully process your single first pack, first box, first packet. Now, next thing, Bob say, okay, if I'm sending single packet, so it will process no issue. Now, I think Sam, Sam, Getting the buffer memory size is multiple. So Bob say, no worry, I will send the next next data in how much? Two packets. So Bob say, I'm sending the packet number two, packet number three. You can say two boxes. Sam say, okay, brother, I'm again receive your data and I'm having the lots of memory. If I'm putting the two number box, three number, so I'm getting more memory. So immediately Sam send back the which one message? Acknowledge two number box and three number packet. You can also say. Now, after process this data, Bob will confuse. Bob say, okay, if I'm sending single, so it will process quickly. If I'm sending two, so again, quick process. Now, Bob say, no worry. I'm sending now how many boxes? Three boxes. Four, five, and which one? Six. Sam say, brother, no issue. I'm having lots of memory and buffer. Four, five, six, and within a second, Process and send back again. Acknowledge. Four, five, six. Bob say, okay, it's taking too much time. Now I'm not getting any way. Bob immediately forward rest of the process back in. Seven, eight, nine, and ten number. Now, Sam say, okay, I'm having again lots of memory. No worry. Seven, eight, nine. So three boxes will cover in my buffer memory and process. 10 number box will be draw because I'm not getting a space. So whenever Sam send back, acknowledge, I'm accepted, I'm received. So in an acknowledge message, Sam say seven, eight, nine. Bob say, no, no, no need to send three. I'm sending four. So please send me acknowledge four. But Sam getting confused on 10 number is draw. So Bob say, please send me the acknowledge of four boxes, seven, eight, nine, and 10. But Sam say, brother, I'm received three. So Bob say, okay, now I know the idea. You have three packet buffer memory. So that means within a second, you can process three packets. So now in this case, how to get the 10 number box on Sam's side? So Sam will send the next message on Bob's side. Brother, please send me the 10 number back box A retransmit. Which one message? Retransmit the 10 number. So Bob will send back 10 number and Sam will send back acknowledge for 10. So in a in a interviews, if someone asking the windowing feature, this one is windowing. But before windowing feature, this feature name before windowing, we are calling a ready, ready feature and not ready. Okay. And sometimes we are getting a stop message as well. So this one is oldest feature, but after getting upgrade, we are getting the name is windowing. Okay. Now fourth feature. 
Fourth feature name is reply. What is the meaning of reply? Reply means data successful, successfully receive. And if someone asking, what is the meaning of acknowledge? Acknowledge means how much data received. Okay. So we done the application, we done presentation, we done session, we done transport. We discuss lab part also, each layer, small lab part, we discuss. In next session, we discuss the network layer, data link and physical link. Okay, go through this video. Okay, and if you want to verify the session layer, go to CMD and write down the command is net state. And how to verify? Access any website. For example, I'm accessing the gentechnetwork.com website and you can get the session information on this your tab whenever we are getting a uh, session, uh, session layer active. Clear? Any session initiate, maintain or delete whenever we do this task. Okay. Okay. Hopefully we've done this session and we meet again tomorrow and discuss the re, uh, rest of the layers and each layers again we discuss. Take your time, go through video.